Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 21. And the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. And Sarah conceived, and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time which the Lord had spoken to him. Now notice between verse 1, God already promised, and he fulfills his promise. Verse 2, she conceived, and that comma. She conceived, comma, and bare Abraham a son in his old age. That comma is nine months. And this is a very important fact that when you read your Bible that you're talking about two different events sometimes and a comma, a period, a colon, semicolon, a verse, or a chapter may mark long periods of time. And this is why the Jews, though they see the first advent, and then the second advent, they can't, oh, wait a minute. Where is this period that Christ has come, though they don't believe he has, because there's no second advent of Christ coming. The Messiah did not come and relieve the nation of Israel. And when Jesus picks up the book of Isaiah, he reads, and he stops. And the answer mostly is, Commas, periods, semicolons, and colons. And sometimes, here, nine months, sometimes it's the entire church age. I mean, you figure, Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his own. Well, she didn't conceive, and then boom, the baby came out. There's nine months, and every woman knows that that period, there's a lot to go on. And the Lord, and the, Lord the Holy Spirit, does, just does not record it. His old age, and at the set time of which God has spoken to him. So there was a set time, though we don't know what it is, that God said that child would be born. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And that means laughter. Because both Abraham and Sarah laughed. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old. And we already read that Ishmael was 13. Isaac is eight days old. As God had commanded him. That's not said about Ishmael. Yea, Ishmael was circumcised, but not eight days. Jesus Christ would be circumcised eight days. And Abraham was a hundred years old. Man, he's old enough to be a great-great-grandfather, but he's a father. By God. 1616, 16, he was 86 years old. 12-4, he was 75 years old. And Sarah, and, and Sarah said, God has made me to laugh. You see, she remembered. What well, made her to laugh? What was the laughter? You're going to have a son. <laughs> and God said, why is Sarah laughing? I don't know. So every time we see, just by the remark here, Sarah would remember that time she laughed at God when she called her boy. Hear me laugh. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? God did. And look over here what we learned right here. And let's try to be as clean as possible. But, all right, here's this old woman that, that Paul says her womb is dead. And her breasts would be dead too. 
He had everything for this woman that is 90 years old has been regenerated, re reliving. And not only does she conceive and bear a child, but now she's able to nourish that child in her bosom. Three remarkable things happened to this old woman. Her, her womb came alive, she gave birth, and she's able to take care of this child herself for nourishment. For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. Well, that's in eight verses. He's been conceived, he's been born, and now he's 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 eating. He's on his own. In eight verses. You mean nothing else happened? I mean, Isaac was born. He was circumcised. He was weaned. I mean, he's off his he's feeding his mother's bosom, and then he was weaned. That's it of his entire life. And this is the life that we see in Jesus Christ. That we don't know anything of Isaac. We don't know anything what happened in Jesus early years. Did the Bible ever say that Jesus Christ ever was a carpenter? Why do we assume that? When he's at the temple when he's 13 years old, he tells his mother, I'm about my father's business, and it has nothing to do with wood, wood tree or woods, carpentry, trees, nails. We don't know what he could have been with God. Paul went off in the wilderness of Arabia for many years as God taught him, not at a, at a, a school or a seminary, but it was him and God. We would only speculate what happened to Jesus. We would only speculate what happened to Isaac. We don't know. But we can't say we don't know. We've got to apply stories and, and make up things that we don't know. And the thing is, as far as the carpentry of Jesus, who cares? He said, well, how could you say that? The Holy Spirit didn't tell us, did he? But he lays out the age and years of Abraham and Sarah. That's important. But he doesn't tell us the birth date of Jesus Christ. And then when Jesus comes into ministry, it says something about 30 years old. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. So he's off his mother's bosom. He can have food, and Abraham breaks out in a big party. My son can eat. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian Ishmael, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking him. He's making fun of Isaac. He, he is teasing Isaac. Not, and Ishmael will be a 14, 15 now. Wherefore, she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. So Sarah approaches Abraham and says, Get rid of him. I'm tired of that woman. I'm tired of her son. Get rid of him. And you would think that this is that argument, this envy that Sarah had with Hagar earlier, before Ishmael was born. But let's see further. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Abraham loved Ishmael. There it is. And God said, all right, the wife speaks up. Abraham's having thoughts of, of love about his child. And God says unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad. Abraham, stop crying. Honey, I want you to get rid of the son. I want you to get rid of that woman. Oh, man, I really love it. Stop it, Abraham. And because of thy bondwoman and all that Sarah has said unto thee, Hearken unto her voice. Abraham, you better listen to that woman that you married. Because what she's saying is coming from me. Had Pilate done that, when his wife came up to him and said, Listen, honey, whatever she called him, sweet cakes, I don't know. Don't have anything to do with that man because I've been having dreams about him. 
And Pilate did not give heed to his wife, and he went down as a failure in history. And God steps in and says, listen, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called no Arabians. Ishmael? Yeah, I'm going to make him a nation, but that's not the one, Abraham. Isaac is the one. And anybody who will say that Ishmael is the people of God, Allah, has defied the Bible. And the fact is that we got to make our old holy scriptures called the Quran. Or Qurans, whatever you want. A bunch of three-year-olds with, with colors or something. I don't know. But it's not with Ishmael. Over and over and over. And also of the son of the bondwoman, Ishmael, will I make a nation because he is thy seed? Okay, Abraham. If Ishmael was not your son, I'd have nothing to do with him. It's because of you. He's going to be a nation. But we already saw when they spoke to Hagar that this guy is going to be a wild wild man. Everybody's going to be against him, and, and he's going to be against everybody. And because of that sin, that wickedness you are with Hagar, he's going to be going against Isaac and his children. And we are in current events right now where the United Nation has declared Jerusalem not Hebrew, but Ishmael, Arabian. They have gotten rid of all the Hebrew including the land and areas, all Hebrew references, and they give them to the Arabians, they give them to the Middle Easterners, defying Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and giving it to Abraham, Ishmael, and the princes, not the tribes. And they'll have to give an account, because God said to Abraham, I will curse them that curse thee, and I will bless them that bless thee. The United Nations is not doing it. As far as the United Nations see, when you hear Jerusalem, that has nothing to do with Israel no more. That is not the capital of Israel that's given over to the dumb of the rock and those that worship. That's the United Nations in 2016 and 2017. They haven't read their Bible. If I were given the opportunity of a free hour that I could go to the United Nations and call everybody assembly, I would preach a message with two parts. Number one, you need to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. I don't care who you are or what you are. It's Jesus Christ that's saved. And number two, you better exalt, you better lift up, you better protect, you better take care of that Jew, or God's going to wipe you clean. Those would be the two-part message I would have for the United Nations. I wouldn't say love and peace. There is no peace, save the Lord, to the wicked. And they're all wicked. But Ishmael is getting a blessing of God because of Abraham. But it's not Abraham. It was Abram. His name was changed after he was born. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Give Abraham that much credit. Whenever God tells him to do something, he gets up early in the morning. And took bread and a bottle of water. But we're going to see that this bottle of water is not going to last. So I got a date here, like I said, I've always said, I don't know about these dates. They're better than I know. B.C. 1898. You think, think Solomon says, is there anything new under the sun that someone can say, behold, here it is. Do you think water bottles, as people have today in the grocery store and buy, that, oh, we got a water bottle. You think that's something new? No, Abraham gave a bottle of water to Hagar. She's carrying a bottle of water in B.C. Now, it may not be plastic, but it's called a bottle of water. Bottle of water is not new. It's in the Bible. How many people know that? And he gave it to Hagar, put it on her shoulder, so it's like a clay pot. Something heavy. And the child. And sent her away. Alright, so he does what his wife says. He does what God says. And she departed. Now, here's the problem. And she wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. She's just aimlessly walking around. In 16.7, the Bible says when she left, she was heading to her Egypt. She had a purpose. She had a place she was going. She was set. Now she's got the child. And she's here, there, and everywhere. She's a wanderer. Why not set yourself to Egypt where you're going? 
and the water was spent in the bottle. They drank it all. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And I wonder, did he faint? Did she throw him? 15 years old. I mean, but it says she cast. And you look up that dictionary, that look up that word in the dictionary. Did she pick him up and throw him? And the Holy Spirit said cast. It's weird. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off. She's got her back to her son. As it were a bow shot. So take a bow and arrow, take an arrow, and shoot it. And how far, I don't know how far it goes, but as far as that arrow is, without a target, that's how far she went. And there are people out there who shoot arrows and know that better than I do. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him, the opposite direction, and lifted up her voice and wept. Son's going to die. And God heard the voice of the lad. Not her. Last time, the angel of the Lord, this is the angel of God now. The angel of the Lord, first time spoke up, spoke with her. Now we got the angel of God. That's not the angel of the Lord. Called to Hagar out of heaven. He doesn't even come down this time. There's a voice from heaven. And said unto him, What ails thee, Hagar? Oh, there's no water. Her son's about to die. Fear not. That's something Jesus would say. For God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. That boy is talking. We don't know what he's saying. But God is hearing. Arise. Get up. Lift up the lad. Pick him up. Maybe she was carrying him. And hold him in thy hand. Hold hand in. Pick him up. Hold hands. Walk. I will make him a great nation. Or heard because of Abraham. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. That was that well there the whole time, and she just didn't see it. And God was with the lad, not the mother, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. That's, that's a bad person in the Bible. Nimrod was a, was a hunter of the Lord. Esau is a hunter of the Lord. He is a hunter. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. This is the south of the Dead Sea area. And his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. So she's an Egyptian. Comes across Abraham, a Hebrew. And she gets him a wife out of Egypt, so he's double Egypt to one Hebrew. And later on, Esau is going to mix with this clan. See, everybody that's against Isaac and Jacob join in in Ishmael and make a family pact. And it came to pass that at, the t at that time, that Abimelech and Phico, the chief captain of his hopes, spake unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that thou doest. The life what God is doing to Abraham, it's showing up in these people. And this could be, wow, you two old farts had a baby. That had to be God. You know, there were some women and people that knew Mary was a virgin and a right girl before the Lord. And when she had a baby, we were like, that had to be God. And there were other people that, you know, said bad things, wicked things. But there were people that knew that Mary was a proper girl that God chose. And it was a testimony to what God has done. Elizabeth was one of them women that said, wow, Mary, God is with you. 
Now therefore swear unto me here by God, capital G, that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor my son, nor my son's son. But according to the kindness that I have done unto thee, I could have had you killed with lying to me. I could have done bad things to you for you lying to me about your wife. Thou shalt do unto me and to the land, land wherein thou hast sojourned. Now this is where later on Isaac is going to go to Gerar. And there's a good pact between them and Isaac and Isaac to Gerar because Abraham has, has made friends here. He's made a pact with them to treat them right. And Abraham said, I will swear. And Abraham reproved and Abraham reproved Abimelech because of the well of water, which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. Now you have to dig water in the wilderness. you got to go dig and find where there's water and make a well. Abraham has, when he did, Abimelech's <coughs> servants came and fought over it and took over the well. And Abimelech said, I walk not who has done this thing. Neither didst thou tell me, neither yet heard I of it, but today. I had, Abraham, this is the first time I'm hearing this. I apologize. I am sorry that this happened. I did not know. I did not order. Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them unto Abimelech, and both of them made a covenant. All right, here's some sheep. Here's some oxen. We're going to do it over this well. We're going to make a pact between you and me over this well. See, Abraham trusts Abimelech, and Abimelech trusts Abraham. Abraham sent seven ewe lambs and a flock by themselves. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What mean these seven ewe lambs, which thou hast set by themselves? What are you doing here? What's going on? And he said to Abraham, for these seven ewe lambs shall thou take of my hand, they're yours, and they sh yeah, that they may be witness unto me what I have digged this well. Here are seven ewe lambs, female lambs, they're yours. As a pact that I, I built and dug this well, it's mine. Wherefore he called that place, now get this, here we go, Beer Sheba. You're going to find this place in the Bible mentioned quite often now on. This is down south of Israel. Beer means well. You know what the main ingredient to make beer is? Is water. Much water is wasted to make a can or bottle of beer. Go on the internet and look it up. It's ridiculous. I had it somewhere, but probably not in this reference. Sheba is a covenant, a pack. The well of the covenant. And every time you read, when you read or hear Beersheba, it's that covenant between Abraham and Abimelech. This is mine. And it stays Abraham's and his children. And Abimelech rose up, and Phico, the chief captain of his host, this will be the captain of the army, captain of the government, and they returned unto the land of the Philistines. So this tells you where we, where we are. We are near the Philistine land. And you can find Beersheba on any biblical map. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba. Now a grove, when it's used wrong, God rebukes. A grove is a is a area of trees, a half circle with an idol in front of it. And in America, mostly you see Mary in front of it. She's in that grove of trees, and it's worship for Mary. Now I have seen some churches where around the the pulpit of the pastor there are trees. Kind of interesting. That's a grove. Whether they're artificial trees or they're not real trees. And there are some people that worship the pastor more than God. That's a grove. Here it's good because Abraham is worshiping God the Father 
not the well, not the, the, the buildings, not anything but God. There on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And from this practice, it gets worse and worse and worse to turn to idolatry. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistine land where he does not belong. And you know Philistines because they'll, they'll have uh, Goliath and they battled David and King Saul their entire lives. Many days. So we know where Abraham is. And that closes another chapter.